Next is the uh, listen section, uh, which is basically the, the uh, low, balancing, low balancing setting that we have for the front end and the back end. Um, here we can see that we bind uh, on the host, we bind on all interfaces um, to port 333 Series X for incoming connections. Uh, we set a low balancing algorithm, uh, which is the least connection algorithm, which means that um, connections will be low balanced across servers, which has the, the least number of existing connections. We also set a, um, an option called HP check here, which means that we want to do uh, a so-called um, health check request, a HP health check request on the backend servers to see whether the, the backend server should be marked as, as up and down. And uh, I'll go into more about you know, exactly how this health check is, is being done. And then this is this default um, service setting which you know, specifies um, how often we want to um, do the, the, the so-called health check on the back end, uh, on the back end side. So in this example we have an interval uh, value of two seconds which means that it will wait you know, every two seconds um, the HAProxy instance will perform a health check. And uh, uh, the down interval is the same, but that's used when the backend server is in a down state. So if uh, the backend server is marked as down, then HAProxy will um, uh, will check the server every five seconds to see if the if the backend server is up and running again. The rise count is is used to determine when the backend server can be considered as operational again. So after three consecutive um, you know successful health checks, then the server will be marked as up or or being operational again. Um, the fall is similar to the rise parameter, but um, it's, it's used to determine when the backend server is considered being down instead. And in this case, it's after two seconds. The slow start um, is used to ease in a server into the pool again. So uh, here you have a setting of 60 seconds before the, the, um, the backend server is actually, uh, actually being part of the, of the backend pool again. And you can also see for the database service here, we have set a max connection limit of 256 connections and a max queue here of 128. The weight parameter here can be used to, um, to distribute uh, the connections, um, uh, not evenly, but you can distribute, if you have a more powerful server, then you can set a individual weight on that server to be a, of a higher value, then the connections will be, um, routed to that server uh, a bit more um, often than the other servers. Uh, HAProxy also comes with a um, web application where you can monitor the performance of, uh, of the, 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 the load balancing HAProxy instance. And I'm not going to go into the details of the configuration here, but it's quite easy to set up. And uh, the way the web application uh, looks like is this uh, maybe many of you guys have seen this before but it's basically quite self-explanatory um, what's what's a bit confusing is the session rate that's basically uh, the number of connections per seconds that uh, that is established uh, by this HA proxy instance the sessions are the current number of connections that you have and then on the true right here um, you can see that uh, you know you can see how many times or the last health check request when that was done, for example, and how many times that um, a certain backend server has gone down or has been operational again. And with cluster control, um, with the new release that we have up and coming, uh, you are able to have this type of statistics inside the application itself. So uh, you don't have to open up a separate application uh, to see the performance of the HAProxy instance. Uh, a bit more on the MySQL health checks. Um, so HAProxy has a, a built-in MySQL health check that can be used, but it's basically, it's very simple. It's basically just checking whether a connection can be made uh, on the MySQL server. And it doesn't check whether, you know, what, what the real state is of the MySQL server. And that's important if you have uh, different types of, of MySQL clusters running here. For a standalone single MySQL server, then that really doesn't really matter. But if you, let's say, have a Galera cluster, 
uh, running, then uh, it's important to really check, you know, what the real node state is, rather than just to check whether the connection is working uh, or not. So that's why, um, as default, with the cluster control application, we deploy um, HA proxy and and use the HP health check request um, uh, to check the status of the of the nodes. And the way to do that is, you know, HA proxy will send a HP, HTTP request to the backend server, and um, when it does that, a script will be triggered, and this script will will check the actual status of the database node. And for for example, for Galera node here, um, Galera has different node states, and if the node state for Galera is synced, then um, that script can return. Um, directly and say that the node is okay and it should be still operational. However, if the node is in a so-called donor state, which means that it's currently um, providing a, uh, a data uh, set snapshot to, a, to another node that is currently joining the cluster, uh, then you have to actually check which method that it's you know, that is currently being used as well. And uh, basically, it's just you know, two SQL queries that you need to run in this script. One to check the get the initial node state, the other one uh, depending on if the state is a donor, just to get uh, uh, the method of the ST method, so to speak. And for Galera, if the method is is actually backups, then this oper then this node can still be operational, and uh, HA proxy doesn't need to take it out out of the pool, so you can return from the script that this node is still operational. However, if the method is uh, rsync or SQL dump, then this uh, node will be blocking, so you cannot still use it in the pool, so you have to return that uh, it's unavailable. So basically, it's you know just running two SQL queries in a simple shell script uh, that, that <coughs> does this uh, uh, check. <coughs> and uh, in order to launch the script on Linux, um, it's a simple way to do that. Uh, what you do is uh, just install the XINIT service, and this service will uh, um, listen uh, on a specific. You, you define a, a service description basically, and this uh, uh, service description uh, specifies that you will listen to a specific port. And when something comes into this this specific port, then you launch a script. And as I mentioned, in this script you do the two SQL queries to check the node state and then return um, the status based on that. Uh, another important thing with HA proxy when you deploy it is to tune the host for, for the network. Um, and I'm not going into the details here either, but basically these are things that we pick up um, you know, online. Um, and this is just saying um, settings or recommendations that you need to use. Uh, on HA proxy, and uh, basically what we try to do here is to minimize uh, <clears throat> or to maximize the, the the number of available ports. So usually, as default, you have uh, around 28,000 available ports that you use. Uh, but with this uh, tuning, uh, we can tune that up to almost 64,000 uh, ports. And for MySQL uh, based applications, uh, especially specifically for PHP based applications where you have, you know, short running uh, connections, um, so where you basically open and close the connections uh, very often rapidly, then uh, it's important to, to try to minimize the risk of port extortion and uh, reduce, you know, the sockets, and also close sockets faster. Uh, in the next one sections, uh, we're going to look at some of the fault tolerance for HA proxy. Um, so having just a, a single HA proxy instance is, of course, not enough. If that process fails, then, um, of course, you, you're not able to access the database uh, backend. So it's important to set up some kind of, of redundancy here for HA proxy in a, in a production environment. And um, you know, one very common way and popular way is to set up an a active uh, passive deployment yeah, with IP failover. And the way to do that is, is to install KeepAlive-D, which is um, uh, it's a virtual uh, router daemon. And uh, KeepAlive-D provides you know, IP failover. It can also do some, some um, health check to bring resources in out of different pools. But 
With HFROXY here, <coughs> the way we use it is just basically to handle um, IP failover. So in this example, we have a virtual IP 10.10.0.10, uh, .10 <coughs> which applications connect to. And this uh, floating IP is, is assigned or allocated to HFROXY1, uh, which is the master, the active one. And then we install KeyBallowD on both HFROXY1 and HFROXY2 servers. So if uh, what happens here, if uh, if HFROXY1 goes down, then KeyBallowD will uh, move the, the virtual IP to HFROXY2 and uh, make HFROXY2 um, the active one. And then uh, the application, from the application point of view, of course, you still connect to the virtual IP. So it will be transparent um, for the application that uh, that you're actually running on on HFROXY2. Uh, what you need to keep in mind here is that from the MySQL uh, database point of view, connections that are coming into the MySQL server are are um, are coming from the HFROXY server, so to speak, and uh, that means that the grants that you create. Uh, need to be set up so that the, the grants are coming in from, or the hosts are coming in from the HR proxy instances and not the virtual IP, which uh, MySQL server will not see at all. Uh, the KeepAlevD uh, configuration file is also quite simple. Um, it's a simple text file, and you can use the same, exactly the same, on both uh, HR proxy 1 and HR proxy 2. Um, the only change here is that you, you set the high priority on the active one, on the master one, and, and uh, that's it basically. Um, the failover, the IP uh, uh, failover and handling will be handled automatically by, by the um, KeepLivD process. Uh, what you can do here is, of course, uh, have more than vir one virtual IP, uh, if you like, but uh, it's quite easy to, to add that uh, later on. The way KeepLivD uh, you know, checks if the HFROXY is down is, is by using a simple inland script, as you can see here. Uh, it tries to do, uh, it tries to kill the HFROXY instance with, um, with, with the example that you see here, with the killer dash zero HFROXY, and uh, that's a, a simple um, way to check if the PID exists or not. And it does uh, this check every two seconds. So with uh, you know um, with HFROX and Keep Live D, it's you know it's quite easy to set up you know manually because the configuration files are very easy to set up and uh, both Keep Live D and HFROXY are included in the uh, distribution uh, packages. But with cluster control, uh, there's also a very easy way to deploy uh, HFROXY in a fault tolerant environment, and that's use the cluster control web application. Let's see if I can uh, show you how it looks. 